Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist, here on part two of how to make P2P via a Frito Crafts acylation, or, or I mean alkylation. And uh, going back to the amount of, F, of iron tribromide you need, catalyst, um, like I said, I'm just guessing it may be three or four times as much as I'm saying, um, but I doubt it's more than that much. Um, like I said, you're going to make it as you use it. And using li a little bit of it helps regulate the temperature of the reaction because if you have just a little bit in there, a catalytic amount, then it can only react with that amount of, uh, of the bromoacetone acetone, to make the carbocation. You know what I mean? And then, once the carbocation reacts with the benzene, then it gets regenerated. You know, that takes time. You know what I mean? And if you only have 10 molecules of iron tribromide in there, those 10 molecules can only react with 10 things, and then they have to wait until it goes through the, you know, it goes through the reaction completely before it's regenerated. You know what I mean? Um, so, you don't want to put a whole bunch in, that's for sure. <laughs> now... You know you're done because it stopped bubbling, right? You're not making any more hydrogen bromide. And at that point, you can even, you know, if you're not sure, you can maybe throw just a slightly little bit more of iron tribromide in there. Um, and how much you put in of the tribromide, you know, at first put just a little bit in. See if it, I mean, if it bubbles and it constantly bubbles, then hey, that's good enough, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to add no more in. It's doing the reaction. Um, so you know you're done when it stops bubbling and it won't bubble anymore, even if you put some more iron tribromide in there. I would probably s still start for about 15, 20 minutes after that. I mean, why not, right? Uh, make sure that it all reacted. And then I'm guessing, you know, and this is a total, total guess, um, maybe this reaction takes 30 to 45 minutes for small reactions, maybe micro reactions, maybe it take 15 to 30 minutes or something, you know what I mean? Um, but like I said, I'm just guessing. You just have to use, you know, some kind of type of common sense on the bubbling, you know what I mean? <clears throat> um, so when you're done, you're completely done, you'd have to filter out all that uh, salt you put in, your iron tribromide. Um, then what you have left, you can wash it with some water, right? It'll split up into two layers. You keep the layer that has the benzene in it, because that is where your P2P will be. And then you wash it again, you know, with some... Uh, and always cold water. Cold water, cold, you know, when you do washing, it's doing cold. Um... Next, wash with some sodium bicarbonate, and that'll help neutralize any of the acid that's in there. And then, uh, you know, it'll form two layers. Obviously, take the benzene layer that has your P2P. Throw some calcium chloride in there that's anhydrous, or some anhydrous magnesium sulfate, or even molecular sieves, and dry up what you have left. Then take that, filter out, you know, your salt that you just dried it with, and then take that and distill it. Distill out your benzene, right? Then take what you have left, purify it with a sodium bisulfite adduct, right? Now that'll purify, that'll pull out all your ketones. But the thing is, is you're going to have a little bit of benzene in there that got double alkylated, meaning there's two acetones attached to it pair it to each other <clears throat> but that probably has a very high boiling point compared to p2p uh i haven't looked it up but i'm guessing it's going to be a lot more might even be a solid uh but you take your adduct and you turn it back into the ketones right you'll have your p2p and you'll have your double acetone benzene thing you know what i mean it got double alkylated they should have a good enough boiling point differential that you should be able to uh, distill out your P2P and leave the 
impurities in the pot, right? You have to do this at, uh, you know, I'd use a vacuum, um, unless you're just working with one or two milliliters or something like that. If you have 20, 40 milliliters or something, I'd do it with a vacuum, um, so it doesn't decompose, because P2P has like a very high boiling point. And basically, that's it. That's the end of the how I would do it if I tried it. You know, my first try, this is how I would guess to do it. Keep in mind, I've never made uh, iron tribromide, but here's a couple ideas on how to do it. You can see up on top there, you have a glass hook, basically get a glass rod and you know, heat it up with a torch, make sure you have a hook on it. Hook your uh, steel wool that you just buy at the supermarket or whatever. And that's basically just iron and a little bit of carbon in it. Heat it up and see the flask there? The flask has just, a, you only need a little bit of bromine, you know what I mean? Um, heat it up so, and you don't even have to heat bromine, it fumes by itself pretty much. And heat up the steel wool with like a torch real quick and dip it into the flask and you'll know it's working because you'll see white dust all over the place iron tribromide is actually a reddish brown not a white but it'll look kind of white when it's in a film you know it'll look like a dirty white in the flask and on the steel wool I don't know if you can collect it that way if it would be a good way to do it because I think a lot of the product would be put on the sides of the flask and you'd have to try to scrape that off and it would just be like a thin film you know what I mean so it'd be tough to maybe get it but you can see down at the bottom there where I have the test tube right you got the bromine a little bit of bromine in there you got your steel wool you heat up the steel wool you shove it in there and you know by the time you get in there bromine fumes so there's fumes all over the place the reaction should take place and because it's the steel wool is so enclosed i think that the uh, iron tribromide powder would all kind of uh, cling to that steel wool there that's left you know what i mean would I, you know what i mean you might have a clump now whereas you can pour that out you know not pour it out because you don't want the bromine touching it but you can scrape that uh, steel wool out and just use the steel wool I mean it's just iron and carbon whatever didn't react or you know uh, put it over some paper and try and you know hit it with a stir rod or something to shake off the the iron tribromide you know what I mean <clears throat> that way you have an anhydrous and you only need a little bit you know what I mean I mean if you're trying to make tons of it I don't know what to tell you but if you're just doing like little experiments then this would be a, might be a good idea, you know what I mean? Whereas you can get all the salt kind of on, clinging onto that metal and just use them, use throw the metal in. I don't know if that'll screw the reaction up having iron metal in there. I don't think it will though. But you could always, like I said, try and clean it off, like hit it with a stir rod, the steel wool, and let the powder kind of cling off of there and then use a magnet to get the metal out you know what I mean so you have pure salt you could do that um, but these are just suggestions I've never done it um, but you can't just make it in water you know what I mean because uh, for one it would be hydrated it wouldn't be anhydrous now the top equation is what we've been talking about during this video the bottom equation is the same reaction but instead of using bromoacetone, you use methyl bromide. And because methyl bromide has a lower boiling point temperature, <clears throat> has a pretty low, I mean, it's a uh, gas at room temperature. I think it is. Uh, I can't remember. But anyways, since it has such a low boiling point, you might want to make the reaction be at minus 5 to minus 10 C. I'd have to look up the boiling point. But you probably want it lower than zero degrees Celsius. <clears throat> and you would end up making toluene or methylbenzene. The only difference in the reaction would be that temperature difference. You'd want it to be cooler. And also, 
uh, you have a lot more polymerization making toluene that way than you do making P2P this way. Other than that, it should reaction should go the same exact way. You know, you add a lot, uh, <clears throat> a lot more uh, benzene than the methyl bromide, and you know, all the instructions be the exact same way to make toluene. Keep in mind, um, making P2P is illegal probably in most places. Definitely in America, probably. Um, you know, uh, so I don't condone anyone making it. If you make it, you do it at your own risk or whatever, or any of these reactions. You do it at your own risk. Um, and also, this, this reaction can um, explode or... Uh, be so exothermic that it frosts up and comes out the top you know what I mean like when you open a can of pop that you just shook up you know you shake the pop up you open it up and all the CO2 s s spills out well that can happen with this reaction if you do it too fast and too hot you know what I mean so keep that in mind too you get a whole bunch of you know acidy benzene hot been you know bromo acetane on your face because it all splurted out all over the room that's your own fault uh, and also if it's illegal in the place you're doing it making it that's your fault too <clears throat> anyways you all have a great day and always remember science is great